Hello, I am Daisy, and if you found me at this video, you are in my Oracle and Tarot playlist. In this video, I will share with you both my rune stones and my rune deck. And a rune is simply a rock with an engraving in it, a runic alphabet native to Germanic peoples. In Norse mythology, Vikings did not simply view runes as mere letters, but as symbols with potent inherent qualities that could be used to communicate with supernatural realm. The runic alphabet has existed for thousands of years and was used to write many Germanic languages before the introduction of the Latin alphabet, including that of the Vikings, as well as being a literal alphabet used during the Viking ages Runes were and still are used by some and believed to hold powers symbolizing inherent qualities and values between the unseen and the seen. Today, runes are having a comeback in popular culture. The name stems from a Proto-Germanic form reconstructed as runo, which may be translated as secret mystery or secret conversation. And even in Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings, we see that inspiration of using ancient letters in the infamous ring. The Chinese have their version of stone casting or stick casting. It is known as the I Ching. And hopefully we will bring a video here to our channel. Like many forms of divination or oracle reading, it can take time to master the art of reading uh, the runes, but if you have a book, it can help you guide you through that process. And mostly, if you're willing to listen to your intuition, you will find that interpreting and reading the stones might reveal things about yourself that you weren't aware of. Also today, I'm going to do a quick flip through of this uh, version of the runes uh, deck style. So this one is from the Runes of Oracle. So put that aside for a little bit as we go through these runes. So I'll be starting off with Manas as they have it here set in the book of Runes by Ralph Blum. And a quick go through here with the book here. As you can tell, it's, I've had this book for over 30 years. so. Got a little bit damaged in one of my moves. I find this book to be a good resource in its contents. It has uh, the Oracle of the Self, the emergence of the runes, a little back history. It talks about consulting the runes, working with two oracles, the upright and reversed readings. It also shares different types of spreads you can use. It also had other information such as destiny profile and interpreting the runes. So we'll go through real quick the uh, interpretations and I'll use the book as a quick reference and guide. We will start with Manas, and this is the starting point and representing the self. It is the essence of water, inviting us to clarity, to be willing to change, but also willing to change in what is called the present moment. A reminder that this is a time of major growth and also rectification, things that we may need to correct and straighten out. A reminder that it is important to be in the world but not of it. If it shows up in the reverse, then Manas is helping you to understand that if you are feeling blocked, to not turn to others but to look inside and understand that in the silence you're going to have the breakthrough that you need and you'll find the momentum. And you might find that you might need to let go of some past habits and behaviors that may be no longer helping in your future growth. It's time for a new beginning. In the second one, we have Jibo, and Jibo is about partnerships and gifts. And you could see this as almost as two sticks coming together. So this is indicating partnerships. And this partnership is not, does not necessarily have to be a physical one here. It could also be your own partnership with your physical self and your divine self and under, understanding that God always enters into 
equal partnership with us if we're willing to allow that. So as you can see, this series has no reverse. It looks the same right side up and upside down. A reminder that, you know what? The gift itself is freedom when we are in union and in partnership. The next one here is Anzus, and this is the messenger rune. So here it is about messages, about signals, about gifts. To stay alert, you know, when you draw this rune, expect the unexpected. This message is always a call, and usually it's a call to a new life. And that new life sometimes may be challenging, but yet it is what is being asked for us. And usually it's about that self-change, and it is helping us to integrate our conscious self with our true intention. And when we get this in reverse, this is important to understand that we might need clarity, that we might be getting mixed signals, that we might feel like uh, frustrated because we can't communicate effectively. So it's important for you to understand um, how can you use the adversity that's showing up in your life into something positive. The next one here is Othila. Othila is the rune of retreat, separation, and also inheritance. And it looks like uh, in the Christian symbol, the fish. So here we have, what do you perceive to be your inheritance? And to focus on, you know, what is good in your life, to understand that there are unique gifts only offered to you, but you have to work through it to connect to that. You need to understand your own nature. And as you dig deeper and allow yourself that journey within, you can actually tap into those divine gifts that are given only to you. Now, in the reverse, uh, the Othila represents you not being tied down to the old ways. And it's important for you to consider what will benefit others and not just what is a benefit to you and understand that the light that you possess now in your life is there to also light the way for others. It is asking you to be totally honest and maybe you have not been honest with yourself when Othila shows up in the reverse. Urus represents strength, manhood or womanhood. So here in the positive when Urus shows up it is ushering change and growth in your life and understand that you may have to go through a passage here maybe a moment of darkness maybe a process and you need to work through that process as you move forward towards this self change and understand that growth and change may take you through places and challenges that you may not feel comfortable but it is in that process that you will find the biggest rewards since self-change is never coerced. It is something that you invite freely into your life. So remain mindful that the new you is always better than the old you. In the reverse here, simply understand that without ears to hear and eyes to see, you may fail to take advantage of a situation. You may want to avoid the challenge, but yet it is the challenge that is going to help you grow. So take heart. Consider that, you know, the life has a constant cycle of death and rebirth, of change. So Urus showing up in the reverse is a reminder, don't be afraid to go deep into the darkness because even as you plunge into the depths of water, you just become a better diver. And here we have Perth. I've learned that uh, different authors pronounce differently because they either add or take away a vowel or two. So, um, but it doesn't take away from the meaning. So just keep that in mind. So Perth is the root of initiation of hidden things and secret knowledge. So this could be that you're going to be offered information, whether it's divine or earthly, that is only privy to you. And while you may be excited about sharing it, this is only for you at this time. And you will know um, that it is yours only. When Perth shows up for you, it is bringing you to your foundation, to the meaning of what it is that you're here to do. So let go of everything, no exceptions, no exclusions, and be ready for the renewal of your spirit. And its reverse is giving you counsel to not expect too much because you know what an old way is coming to an end and you cannot repeat the old without 
suffering. So if you're willing to be stuck, you're going to be stuck with that pain as well. And if you're going to be stuck because of the pleasures, you're going to stop and miss out on the growth that you have. So this also may mean that there's going to be some setbacks and um, just a test of your character overall when it's in the reverse. An office looks like an X, but what happens here with this one, it has a shorter, uh, one of the sticks are shorter, and it represents constraint, necessity, and pain. So here, with, when Nothis shows up, it might mean that you're dealing with some severe constraints in your life, and or maybe some big life lessons. And here, it's also um, bringing you aware to your limitations that may be caused by yourself, or maybe limitations from those that are around you. Because sometimes there are situations and people that as much as they love us, they sometimes stop our growth because of their own fears. So here it's important for you to identify your shadows, the things that you repress, your weaknesses, and use that to help you grow. So this definitely is a, a reminder to pay off old debts, to restore your harmony in your life, and to be mindful that you know this rectification comes before progress. So there's got to be some sweat before you can um, you know, sing that victory song. There's got to be something given in exchange for the glory and the happiness that you'd like to move into. So in the reverse, this here is a reminder that a cleansing is required. So you may be pushing against that pain, but here it is a suffering that is a part of your growth and a reminder that this is a gauntlet that you need to go through. When it shows up, it's reminding you to control your anger, to control your emotions, and understand that you need to undergo that dark side of your passage so you can bring, be brought into the light. We have Ingus represented by two double X's, and this is fertility and new beginnings. And it's almost like if you focus this as a womb, it'll help you remind that this is Ingus, fertility. And so Ingus, because of that fertility, is associated with the moon and harmonizing, and also those secret desires and intuition. The good thing here that when we see Ingus, it is the completion of beginnings. So it is allowing us to move on to that next phase, that we don't have to go through the grind of the hard work of those beginnings. And it's important for us to resolve and clear away the old. And when we do that, we're going to experience a release from tension and uncertainty. The next one is Awaz. And I remember it by accentuating the Z. And this rune is the rune of defense and avertive powers. So here, it is a reminder that maybe if there are obstacles in your path, remember that a delay sometimes is more beneficial. So if you feeling that maybe that contract is not, you know, pulling through, that sale is not happening quick enough, that relationship is not moving as fast as you want, or things are not, um, you know, moving the way you want, understand that the blessing is in that delay. The blessing is there and it is important to practice patience. So this is another rule that is the same right side up or upside down. So as that spiritual warrior, it's important to understand that the obstacles on your path are the gateways to a new life. We have here algaes. For some reason, I every time I see algaes, I think about chicken feet. And um, I don't know how that's associated to protection, but chickens need to be protected from prey. So that's how I remember Aegis and protection. So here it's a reminder that you need to control your emotions. And sometimes when we have transitions in our life, challenges in our life, we fail to um, demonstrate the best version of ourselves, but that's what is being asked of us. And so here, these feelings for us, these challenges are actually being brought up to us as a mirror to help us grow and it is in those battles that we get to see our true self and we either choose to become better because of it or we stay stuck in the past somewhere because of it so bring out that spiritual warrior algis is reminding you to remain mindful that timely action and correct conduct are the only true protection that you can have for yourself and you must be aware of that for yourself so in the reverse, we're being warned not to get involved with people that are 
um, taking the life out of you or using you. So being eyes wide open is important because then you know how you're going to maneuver in whichever way you seem right. So if you feel that you are being used, what's important is that you're alert and that you may not win, but you will never lose because Agis will always teach you a lesson from what is taking place. So use temperance and courtesy, and that's the way you will protect yourself. Fehu, well, looks like the letter F. And Fehu here is about possessions and nourishments. And this is the root of fulfillment of ambition, satisfied of reaching your goals as above, so below, all coming into one for you. And knowing that your creator, your God is nourishing you and protecting you. So here it's about conserving what has already been gained also, the fruits of your labor, and making sure that your good fortune will continue and that your star will continue to rise. So it's also alerting you that be aware not to get reckless and overconfident. In the reverse, Fehu is bringing attention that you may be frustrated with something, maybe uh, some drawbacks in your life, maybe some missed goals, and you might be feeling helpless. So Fehu here in the reverse will help you ask that question, what lessons do I need to learn from this in my life? The next one is Wunjo. And Wunjo, I know it looks like a P, but it represents joy and light. And when it shows up, it means that you're receiving a blessing. Whether it's a material gain or um, spiritual or emotional uh, satisfaction, this is a gain not just of knowledge, but that you have transmuted that into your core being and you have assimilated this. And it is that type of success that whether, whether you lose everything today, it's because of the knowledge that you gain, that you'll gain it back times 10. And it is also portending that new clarity will show up in your life, new ambitions, new goals. In the reverse here, um, it is just a reminder that things are slow and happening. Don't, don't worry as much because every process that, that starts is like a new birth and it has to go through certain stages. And that sometimes may be frustrating. Allay your fears and just, you know, right now, Practice the art of patience because you know what in the end everything is a test So focus on the present And here we have Jera representing harvest Fertile season and also the span of one year So when Jera shows up it's here about activities that you have committed to things that are now going to come into fruition fruition it is the, the time that you've worked hard, you put in the best effort, and now providence is here, ready to deliver for you. But also understand that there is a timeline here that if you're asking that question, it may be a timeline of one year, something is evolving within a year, and you will see the rewards of that within that year. And as you can see, this is um, has no reverse. It's the same right side up and right side down. The next one is Kano. Kano, and it represents opening. We see like it's opening its mouth. It has refers to fire also. So a couple things. When you have fire, you have light. And when you have light, you can reach things. So here it's saying that you are ready now to receive, but also when you're giving, that you can give and remember to give with non-attachment. Be clear with your intentions and concentrate your efforts at the beginning of the tasks. So you'll get the most when you stay focused at the beginning. And that's in the reverse, we see the opposite. There's a darkening. There's a cloud overhead. Something is blocking. You can't see everything, whether it's in a business deal or in a relationship. Maybe it has run its course. And now you need to be prepared to live possibly with less. And by doing that, you come into a deeper part of yourself, understanding it and valuing the more that is on its way. Tewaz. So this is not too hard to understand that Tewaz represents warrior energy. And here it is the rune of the spiritual warrior. Always the spiritual warrior is at battle with the self. And here it's reminding to be mindful that all you can really do is stay out of your own way and let the will of heaven flow through you. It is really that effortless. And those are among the hallmarks of the spiritual warrior, that flow and allowing and being in that present moment. Because the reward of patience 
is patience. So when Tebus shows up in your life, this is a reminder to dig deep within yourself. Have courage and the dedication and you will get through whatever situation is in front of you. Because this symbol strengthens your resolve in the struggle of the self within the self. And when you get out of your own way, well, you'll see the things ahead of you much clearer. And so in the reverse, it's a reminder that you need to be careful not to overexert yourself, not to put your energies where where it's weakening you. And so another important thing to remember when Tai Wu shows up in the reverse, it just means that you're not spending time, you know, listening to that higher guidance. The next room we have is Burkana. Looks like a B, so it won't be hard to remember because of it represents rebirth and growth. So here it denotes fertility and also growth that may occur in all your affairs, whether it be the world, family, business matters, or your own relationship, or your relationship with yourself. This is definitely leading to something that will blossom and give wonderful fruit. Most you need to understand that what is happening in your life is a work of the spirit. So stop resisting and most important, be clear of your motive and your intentions. When Burkana shows up in the reverse, quite clear that this is going to be the opposite, that there might be some obstacles in growth. There might be something that might be um, questionable about your character. And maybe you are blocking this new life that's trying to emerge through you. So there might be a feeling that maybe you're failing, that things are not working out. This is just a reminder that you're going to be required to examine what has occurred, take responsibility of your role in it and the needs of others. And the question is, are you placing your wants before the needs of others? And as you strip away all these layers that are blocking, you're soon going to find that within is the seed that's ready to grow and blossom. Awas is represented by this M, which means movement and progress. And when we see Awas showing up in your life, it's about transitions, it's about change, it's about new attitudes, new dwellings, new business, new opportunities. This is a sense of this gradual development that's happening in your life, this steady progress. And this is what's really beautiful. It's this slow motion, slow growth. And when we have slow growth, we have real growth because it, we have time to assimilate what's happening. It was in the reverse. It's signaling that something is blocked. Maybe the way that we're thinking, maybe something that you're doing, or maybe something that you're not doing. The opportunity may be presenting itself that you do take no action. So if you're feeling at a loss and unclear about what you need to do, consider and pray upon what is timely in your nature. And remember that, you know what? You can't rush what is yours because what is yours will come to you. And here we have Lagus. And let me take a minute to show you. Uh, a while back, I casted the stones on, on a surface that was like concrete or something, I can't remember, and it actually broke, so I had to tape it. So take consideration, if you're using stones such as these to cast, you may want to have a cloth or uh, some soft surface to cast them in if you're throwing them. Um, you know, some, that's why it's, it's probably best to just draw them out of the bag one by one uh, and shake your bag gently. And Lagos, uh, it's not too hard for me to make the association because it, re it means flow, it means water, and uh, also that which conducts. So in Spanish, lagos, lago, which means river, so it's easy for me to remember. So this is about those unseen powers that are active, that are conducting and flowing energy around you, nourishing and shaping things. And that's what lagos is doing. It's helping you fulfill your desires. And you're going to find that when lagos shows up, things are, are um, flowing through naturally in your life. And because of its association with water, we have this intuition, we have these emotional needs, as well as alerting us that we may be in a time of cleansing, we may be a time of realigning, reorganizing things, and that's what this is. So Lagos is letting us know, hey, you know, success is right around the corner. So it's important to tap into our intuitive knowing and attuning to our own rhythms and things will begin to flow. In the reverse, Lagos is warning against overreaching, overstretching over yourself, overstretching your resources. And so here, a reminder that, you know what, it might be that you are not 
listening to your intuition. You're not tapping into your highest self. You're not connecting with your source. So remember that what is called now, when Lagos shows in the reverse, is to go within and to honor the receptive side of your warrior spirit. In Hagalas, we see this, and Hagalas, either which way we go, it's about the elemental power, it is about disruptive natural forces. And here, when Hagalas shows up, don't be surprised if there are situations in your life that just seem to be out of control and out of hand, because these events are there and are beyond your control to do what? To help you to guide you, to draw out the best in you, to awaken those parts of you that needs to like be shaken up because maybe you've just been taking it easy. And Hagalas, again, the more severe the disruption, the more significant and timely are the requirements for your growth. Rado, Rado is not hard for me to remember because I use the R and then radio, but it's Rado. It's concerned with communication, a communication that helps you attune with your higher self, a communication that is understanding and compassionate, especially with those around you. So here that is what is asking you to do, to be alert of that. And also perhaps even that communication through prayer so that you can connect with your higher self and witness the self and the teacher within you and also that union but that union within yourself and your divine self if radio shows up in the reverse for you then what is happening here is that there could be blocked communication there could be uh, situations that are not coming through effectively that have to do with the realm of communication whether it's contract whether it's spoken but definitely that is an alert and for you to pay attention to that for you to be aware of the communication that there may be a block and your role in it is to hope for the best outcome. Okay, the next one is Thurizaz, and this represents gateway. Thurizaz indicates that there is work to be done, both outside and inside, and it is through your mun mundane experiences that you're going to find the so-called Heaven's Gate. And also, Thurizaz is calling you to find those parts within yourself that you need to expose because sometimes we hide but it's we hide because we're afraid of what others might see but not so much that it's we're afraid of what we might see Thurizaz is urging you to imagine yourself at the top of an incredible mountain and you looking at the past and assessing what worked and what didn't looking at the joys and the sorrows and with that being grateful for each one of those moments in your life and then see yourself walking through the gate. Drawing Thurizaz in the reverse demands contemplation on your part and reminding you not to attempt to go beyond where you haven't yet begun. So be still, collect yourself and wait on the will of heaven. And we have Dagas and Dagas is the rune of breakthrough and transformation. When Daga shows up, it is a reminder that the transformation and the situation that are happening in your life is to bring and usher that change because you no longer can continue to live an ordinary life. New things are being presented and you must push through to live that new life. And Daga's is also alerting you that a major period of achievement and prosperity is on its way and that the darkness is already behind you. Here we have Isa represented by a line and it represents stand still and also represents ice or winter. So in its sense, this is a reminder when it shows up that the winter is upon you, that this is there needs to be a time of reflection, a time of slowing down. And when you slow down, you can contemplate before you uh, move forward. And it is metaphoric winter. Isa is urging you to stand still and this is a type of standstill that is required for you to do it alone whether it's you in your mind finding that isolation that's going to help you contemplate that isolation that helps you nourish yourself that isolation that allows your spirit to grow and also to trust your own process and watch for the signs of spring here we have Zoelu and Zoello represents 
wholeness, light forces, and the sun's energy. So, you know, the way to remember it is kind of to imagine that as a sun ray coming down. And in this here, it's the spiritual warrior's quest, the wholeness. That is what we're embarking on. And so when we see Zoelu showing up, it's a time for regeneration right down to a cellular level. The way we think, the way that we act, all of this is being asked of us to draw ourselves completely. Also, the message from Zawalu is to open yourself up and to let that light into all parts of your life that has been secret, that has been shut away, and let it shine because this light not only will help you, but it will help others. And lastly, we have the blank ruin representing the unknowable, also known as the God Odin. So here it could portend many things, the new beginning and in that new beginning to allow total trust in this new process and be excited for the future. But it also can represent a metaphoric death, portending that death of letting go of those parts of ourselves that are no longer serving us so that we can relinquish that control and ultimately, you know, free ourselves, which is the challenge of the spiritual warrior. And also the blank room represents you understanding that the obstacles of your past can become the gateways that lead you to the new beginning. And there we have it. So if you wanted to do a reading, you could leave it in the pouch if the runes come in a pouch. Or you can put it in the tumbler or just draw and cast. Like you could do a past, present, and future reading. And uh, very similar to when we do the oracle cards. So let's give it a whirl and just kind of do a general uh, look at just like what do I need to know about this situation. So here we have Awas and the M represents movement if you remember and progress. So it could be that in the recent past this situation had been evolving, had been progressing and moving in a very positive direction. And in that sense it's been very comfortable because it's been a slow progress and that's and okay. we have in the present Ingus and Ingus represents fertility and those new beginnings so it could be that as this relationship or the situation was progressing very slow but now it's moving into where it's gotten to that new level there's this new beginning there's something fertile about it and in some cases this could be that in this relationship the fertility could mean two things that now they progress there's going to be children involved or this is going to be now a union uh, the next step that progresses from that so currently we're seeing something manifested and it's taking on this new chapter because now we have the strength and the foundation and this activation of completing that which was started so interesting that for some this could actually mean uh, a real giving birth of um, something that has progressed forward now this is the time or there's this relationship now is giving birth to now a more stronger step into the relationship and then we have in the future position a was it seems to be very progressive here because uh, it's kind of alerting us that there might be some stress in the near future but if there is going to be an obstacle in our path we need we need to understand that um, everything that's presented is allowing us to actually grow. This may be something beneficial. We might see some difficulties now because of this new new life, this new thing. But you know what? There is no challenge that we cannot overcome. And that's what AWAS is alerting us to do. That we need to set our house in order. We need to tend our business. We need to be clear. And you know what? We wait on the will of heaven. And there we have it. Everything will be fine in the end. So like like I mentioned earlier, you don't have to be afraid of using this. You can become very comfortable. You just need the book to guide you through. And after a while, by association, you begin to become familiar. But most important, just like you do anything as you stare out into the clouds and you see beautiful clouds and you say, what kind of day am I going to have? And the clouds tell you, well, there might be some obstacles, but as you keep looking towards the north sky, you see some clear. So maybe in the afternoon it'll be clear. Or you have a clear sky. It's like, wow, it's going to be sweet sailing all the way. 
So it's up to you how you follow your intuition and allow that intuition to grow and help you understand the symbols and signs that you get, whether it's you're reading an oracle or just reading chance things that you see throughout the day. Before I leave, I would like to talk to you about this deck that I bought. And it was in that same um, vein uh, to find a resource that I didn't have to keep going to the book so that I could uh, become more familiar with the signs. So I found this one. It's called, uh, of course, the Runes Oracle. The Ancient Magic Runes Oracle of Fate and Fate and Wisdom. Blessings and Divination. It comes in this box. And the other thing uh, that I noticed in the back, it gives a brief description of the oracle. And, and then it comes with two extra little cards. It does not have a booklet. Um, it uh, gives you an introduction. Um, they also, one thing that they did with this set, they there's 48 cards here. And they have the same cards, both in the white and also what I would call copper uh, color. Uh, they're both the same, and th they briefly explain why they give you full, the same set, I guess, if you prefer a different color. Um, the other thing is the guidebook. Um, you would have to download the guidebook by using your phone and taking a picture of the QR code. And once you download it, there'll be uh, this is what it'll look like. You'll have um, just like the regular book, and it gives you a little background and each one then begins to give you a brief explanation of each rune. So, um, it like the deck did not come with the blank deck, but it does show you how to create your own um, blank and, and how to use a blank rune. I find it beneficial to have the runes in deck form um, because you can make an association between the symbol, the name, and the description, so it might help a beginner to become familiar with the uh, symbols and the meanings. So we could see there's Manas, Manas, and then it has a brief description. Gibo, Union. Just I'll go through quickly. Anzu, Othala. Inheritance, material goods, Uruz, transformation, Perthu, discovery, fate, initiation, nowadays, temperance, constraint, Inguas, renewal, Awas, protection against danger and also passage and also representing the death and rebirth. Algis, protection. Behu, flow and change. Wunju, pleasure and joy. Jara, justice and harvest and rebirth. Kaunas, the mystery, the opening. Tewas, motivation, justice, courage, and tenacity. Burkana, the beginning. Awas, progression and change. Lagus, water and intuition. Hagala, disturbances. Rado, the journey, communication, and union. Lurizas, small trials. Dagas, transformation. Isa, concentration and ice. And Zowulo, success. So there you have it. Hopefully, you have enjoyed. Um, this video and um, me showcasing the, the runes both in deck style and in room style and if you're interested in a reading please do visit my website at fortuneforecast.com I offer 20 and 40 minute reading also if you haven't done so yet hit that like button leave me a comment tell me what you think do you already own these in which form do you own them and if you haven't done so yet 
If you like what you see and hear on my channel, please do subscribe, share it with your friends, and until we meet again at the next video here on my channel, wherever that may be.